Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the topic SDD and SDT in compiler design. SDD is syntax directed definition and SDT is syntax directed translation. A SDD or SDT is a context free grammar together with attributes and rules or actions. Here rules are defined by SDD and actions are performed by SDT according to the rules given. Always an attribute is associated with grammar symbol and rules are associated with the productions. For example, we have two productions here E tends to E plus T and E tends to T. The associated semantic rules are E dot val is equal to E dot val plus T dot val and E dot val is equal to T dot val. Here val is the attribute associated with the grammar symbol E and T. The first rule is performing addition operation and the result is stored in E dot val and the second rule assigns the value of T to E. Now let us see the types of attributes. The attributes can be categorized into two groups depending on how they receive their values. The first one is synthesized attribute and the second one is inherited attributes. First we will see about synthesized attributes. The attribute of the node that are derived from its children nodes are called as synthesized attributes. For example, consider the production S tends to ABC. Here ABC are child nodes and S is the parent node. If S is taking values from its child nodes A, B or C, then it is said to be synthesized attribute as the values of ABC are synthesized to S. Let us see an example for synthesized attribute. The SDD associates to each non-terminal a synthesized attribute called val. So we can see val here and we have three productions and associated semantic rules. The first one is performing multiplication operation, second one is addition and third one is assigning the integer value to E. In synthesized attributes values will be flowing from child to parent as mentioned here. And we know that the actions can be represented in the form of SDT according to the rules given. This SDT can be represented as parse tree. Now let us consider the input string 3 into 2 plus 5 and frame the parse tree. Here we can see the parse tree E dot val is represented as E plus E according to the rule number 2. And this E can be represented as E into E according to rule number 1. And this E can be represented as integer according to rule number 3. So every E is represented as integer and here also it is represented as integer. Now we are mentioning the number. So here integer is nothing but a number. So this 3 is represented here and 2 is represented here and 5 is represented here. If we see the leaf nodes we can see the given input string that is 3 into 2 plus 5. Now, let us see how the value is flowing from child to parent. According to rule number 3, this integer is assigned to the parent E dot val. The same way here in the past tree, the value 3 is passing to its parent E dot val as per the flow mentioned in the arrow. Here also the number 2 is passing to the parent E dot val and this is multiplication. According to the rule number 1, we have to multiply the 3 with the number 2 and the result is stored into its parent E dot val. And here 5 is passed to its parent according to rule number 3. And next is addition. So according to rule number 2, we have to add this and this and store the result in its parent. So 6 plus 5 is 11 that is stored in its parent. So this is the concept of synthesized attribute. It is taking the values from child to parent. Now let us see about inherited attributes. The attributes of the node that are derived from its parent or sibling nodes are called as inherited attributes. Consider the production S tends to ABC. Here ABC are child nodes and S is the parent node. So if we consider A, it can get the values from its siblings B or C or its parent S. If we consider B, it can get it value from A or C or S. So A and C are siblings and S is the parent. If we check C, it can get the values from siblings A, B or its parent S. So let us see an example for inherited attributes. 
The symbol T is associated with the synthesized attribute type and L is associated with an inherited attribute in. Here we have the productions D tends to TL, T tends to in, T tends to real, L tends to L1, ID and L tends to ID. Here D is the declaration and T is the synthesized attribute which is called as type and L is the inherited attribute, L is nothing but a variable. So, here we can see that L tends to ID, ID is the variable. Here according to the semantic rules, L dot in is equal to T dot type. That is, we know that L is the variable and T is the data type. So, L is inheriting the data type T. That is what it is mentioned as L dot in is equal to T dot type. The data type can be any uh, type like integer, real, float, double, long, double, etc. But for simplicity, we are considering only two data types here that is int and real. So, this T can be represented as int according to rule number 2 and T can be represented as real. So, the semantic rules are T dot type is equal to integer, T dot type is equal to real. And when we want to declare more than one variable, we need a comma. So, that is represented in this rule. So, L tends to L1, ID. We already know that L is an identifier which is nothing but a variable. So, this can also be represented as L1, ID. That is two variables. So, here this L1 can be further split into L1, ID. So, that is the concept of this. So, here L1 inherits the value of L. That is what is L here? L dot in. L dot in means it is inheriting the value of data type T. So, automatically whatever data type applicable to L is applicable to L1 also. Okay. So, next is add type. So, what is the purpose of this add type means whenever a variable is declared, its name and its data type is recorded into the symbol table. So, here add type of id dot entry comma L dot in. So, you are entering the identifier as well as its type its type is mentioned in L dot in. It is nothing but data type T. And here also L tends to ID. We are entering the uh, identifier into the symbol table along with the data type. In inherited attributes, values will be flowing into a node in the pass tree from parents and siblings as we have seen here. We know that actions can be mentioned as SDT in the form of pass tree. For that, we are considering the input string int id, id here. Now, let us see the pass tree first. So, according to the rule number 1, we are mentioning d tends to tl. So, d can be represented as t and l. And this t can be represented as int because we need int here. So, this t dot type is represented as int. And this l can be represented as l1, id because we need two variables. So, we are using this rule l1 comma id and this l1 again can be represented as id according to the last rule. So, now if we consider the leaf nodes, we can see that int id comma id. Always we have to associate the semantic rules along with the production. So, d tends to tl. So, what is t here? t is type. So, t dot type is equal to what type we are declaring it as an integer. So, that is what it is mentioned as t dot type is equal to integer. So, when t tends to int, then it has to be mentioned as t dot type is equal to integer according to this diagram. Now, we can see the flow of uh, values in the node. Uh, this t dot integer is passed to its sibling l. That is, l is the variable which inherits the type t which is nothing but integer. So, that is what l dot in is equal to integer and this is inherited by its children that is l dot in is equal to integer because we have l comma id. So, l comma id means in this case l1 dot in is equal to l dot in. So, this is considered as l1. It is inheriting the value from its parent. So, it is integer. So, this is also integer comma id okay so here id means we have to record the whenever we find the identifier we have to record it into the symbol table so the arrow is going upwards here it is not representing the flow of data it is representing the information that it is recording this identifier as well as its data type into the symbol table here also we are just recording its uh, uh, identifier and its data type as integer so thus we can see that the value is flowing into the node in the pass tree from parents and siblings. So, this is the concept of inherited attributes.
Now let us see the types of SDT. We have two types of SDT, S attributed SDT and L attributed SDT. First we will see about S attributed SDT. If an SDT uses only synthesized attributes, it is called as S attributed SDT. S attributed SDTs are evaluated in bottom up parsing as we have seen in the synthesized attributes as the values of the parent nodes depends upon the values of the child nodes. Semantic actions can be placed in rightmost place of RHS. Semantic actions means the rules which we have seen, semantic rules. So, in uh, S attributed SDT, we can place the semantic rules in the rightmost place of the RHS, that is productions. L attributed SDT. If an SDT uses both synthesized attributes and inherited attributes, but with a restriction that inherited attribute can inherit values from only its left siblings. So, this is called as L attributed SDT. Attributes in L attributed SDT are evaluated by depth first search and also left to right passing manner. And semantic actions can be placed anywhere in the right hand side of the productions. Let us consider the uh, production S tends to ABC. Here ABC or child nodes and S is the parent node. Here if we take B, it can obtain value either from its parent or its left sibling. So parent means S, left sibling means A. It cannot get the value from its right sibling C. So this is the restriction in L attributed SDT. Same goes for A and C. So, if we take A, it cannot take uh, any values from the siblings because it do not have the left sibling. It has only its parent, so it can take value from its parent alone. If we take C, since it is the rightmost one, it can take values from A, B or S because A and B are left siblings and S is the parent. So, thus we have seen about types of STD. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about the concept SDD, SDT and types of SDT. Thank you.